welcome to the components of internet of things course so till now we have talked about the basics of deep learning we have seen uh, what does a neural network means what are the different components of a neural network like uh, the activation function the um, <coughs> nonlinear uh, activation function output function how we can identify the parameter how to, we can determine the parameter of a neural network through back propagation algorithm and we have also talked about when we do the back propagation or when we try to fit a model using neural network it may happen that we can have a underfitting scenario so when we have a limited capacity of the model and we can have a overfitting when we have a very high capacity model so those are the primary issue that we need to tackle when we are developing a model for a particular data now coming to the uh, context of iot so uh, in a present scenario you will find many systems which actually employs iot infrastructure to improve their efficiency to manage their equipments and a lot of other purpose and so this is this iot is a, mm, a very big source of a data on which people can apply different kind of analytics to find out patterns in the data to take necessary action if uh, in order to improve the performance of the whole system so in this one hour we'll be looking into some of the applications of iot where uh, deep learning can fit into uh, the stuff <coughs> and when we try to develop a, a deep learning model for a iot device uh, then what are the challenges we have to face because uh, the iot devices are typically resource constrained devices which are placed at the very leaf level and it will have a very limited uh, computation power and limited memory as well so if i have a very big neural network it won't be possible to run on a very uh, small device so what are the things that we can do and how it can be done so we will see a basic overview on that so now let us take a look uh, the basics of uh, deep learning stuff that can actually help iot so here in the first stuff we try to look into the basics problem that uh, deep learning try to address which we will call the foundational service so what are the typical problem that we try to address or the basic problem like image recognition so given an image probably i may need to identify where uh, the object is present or what kind of object is present <coughs> and many other things that we need to figure out from a given image so if i have that image and if i can extract out meaningful information then on top of that meaningful information i can develop uh, uh applications like sec uh, i can have a face recognition i can identify uh, <coughs> uh, what kind of object is there and how they are related and different kind of uh, queries can be performed on those data so typically uh, the basic operation that deep learning try to focus are as follows so this is not an exhaustive list i have just listed out some of those scenario like image recognition is one of the very fundamental problems and if we can solve this image recognition problem then many other applications can be developed uh, around that <coughs> uh, and this image is a important stuff because if we if we think of a present day scenario we can we may have cameras 
uh, installed in several places so we have a huge amount of image of the video data available to us so extracting meaningful information out of that stuff is a real challenge then <coughs> after image it comes the speech and the voice so speech and voice data are also abundant and uh, this kind of data can be generated very quickly so if I try to extract a meaningful information uh, 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 from the speech or the voice data then uh, I can run deep learning based model and I can extract uh, useful information for me and once I uh, extract that information I can actually take the necessary action as well like if you are familiar with Google Assistant then I, I can speak something on my Android phone and the phone will try to execute that operation maybe I can uh, say that uh, call a particular person so the uh, the Google Assistant will uh, understand the speech or the voice and then it will make a call to the respective person so these are some of the application the fundamental stuff is we need to uh, identify the speech or we have to recognize those voices and we have to extract of meaningful information then <coughs> another important aspect is the indoor localization like if I want to um, identify an object in a uh, 3d space because every typically the ob um, object will be uh, lying somewhere in some 3d space and if I try to locate that object then what are the ways I can actually locate and how can I reach to that location so these are kind of important problem when we talk about the uh, retail stuff or when we have a very big warehouse then uh, uh, then finding out an object in a big warehouse is a difficult problem and so therefore if we have some methodology through which we can actually find out the actual position of a particular object then it will be uh, beneficial for me so in order to identify the object maybe we may need to use the GPS the Bluetooth the Wi-Fi connectivity of the uh, different stuff that are available in the IoT infrastructure another very important aspect is uh, <coughs> uh, physiological and psychological state detection because nowadays there are plenty of wearable sense or wearable devices which can actually monitor the physical condition of a person it can monitor the blood pressure it can monitor the uh, heartbeat and different other kind of stuff it can actually monitor so <coughs> yeah, and uh, this sensors actually generates a huge amount of data and I uh, from that data one can do different kind of analytics to find out meaningful information and they can also recommend that what a person supposed to do like if a person is not sleeping for a long time then maybe this device can suggest the person <coughs> that you can have a sleep now other issue also uh, in IoT devices and security and privacy so whenever we develop any IoT system then how I can have a s security and the privacy built around that infrastructure so deep learning can also come into play in order to provide security because uh, like let's say I have an mm, smart door where I can have an installed a camera so if a person comes then if I can recognize his face from the installed camera then maybe I can open the door so I can provide an access uh, to that person <coughs> so now identifying that uh, 
version uh, we need to do some kind of image recognitions and then probably we will be allowing uh, that person to enter in a particular room so these are some of the basic foundational service that uh, dl can provide but many times they will be interlinked with each other <coughs> so so if we have a good comment over these aspects then probably we can develop many interesting applications around it so here i have listed out some of the basic uh, applications that probably uh, we are aware of there can be plenty of other applications which i have not mentioned here like smart home smart city energy management intelligent transport healthcare agriculture education industry government sports retail and there can be many more so this list is very huge <coughs> so i am not mentioning the other stuff so so now we will take a look on some of these applications and what could be the possible uh, scenario where the deep learning can come into picture and when we will look into this some of this problem then many a times it will come <coughs> the this foundational service that will be applied so so let's look into a very basic scenario like smart home so why we need to have a smart home because we need to have a energy efficient building or i should reduce my energy consumption because of uh, uh, if i consume more energy so i uh, i am producing more carbon footprint so that's not good for my uh, good for the environment also if i have a smart home it can provide convenience for us it can in increase the productivity of the people staying in the home it can improve the life quality of the people so let us take a um, few examples where uh, uh, smart home can actually help us in order to achieve some of these properties like convenience <coughs> uh, productivity and life quality for example let's say i have a refrigerator and i have some smart uh, stuff installed in that refrigerator and it will monitor that how much uh, <coughs> uh, how much supplies are available in uh, in the refrigerator let's say i put my milk on a container in my refrigerator and i keep my uh, keep eggs on the um, refrigerator now whenever i need milk or i need egg i take out from the refrigerator and i take it for, for my own food now it may happen that i may run out of the eggs or maybe the milk then if somebody can point out me that uh, i am running out of these items then probably i will be aware of the stuff and i, I can procure the necessary amount of stuff for me so if 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 those if the eggs and the milk or some other items remains in the refrigerator maybe i won't be aware of how much quantity is left so if if i can develop a framework if i can monitor those items then i can be notified with uh, notified with appropriate message at the uh, right point of time that i need to procure those items similarly there can be uh, a situation when i need to control uh, the uh, hvac system in a more meaningful manner more intelligent manner because if i have a smart home it will be installed with air conditioning and the heating and other necessary stuff <coughs> uh, the s situation is like let us consider this situation 
that I have a building where I have say hundred of rooms where I have fitted in each room I have fitted with some AC now if everybody turns their AC at the same point of time then my power consumption will be very high but if I can um, turn on the ACs in a very coordinated manner then I can achieve a, um, I can reduce the peak power demand to a very uh, great extent so how I can manage the HVAC system that my temperature is not going beyond the desired limit but still I can manage the uh, I can manage to reduce the peak power so that it uh, uh, that is a good uh, thing that we can do similarly we can have a lighting control system like if there are enough uh, light from outside then maybe I can turn off my light and I can continue with the natural light so how I can control that stuff or if let's say if it's a, a summer and if it's a uh, afternoon in the summer then there will be plenty of sunlight which uh, plenty of sunlight so it may happen that in I don't want that much of light in my room so maybe my system will try to adjust the blinds on the window so that I have a uh, desired amount of lighting condition Uh, then there can be other uh, system that uh, how many people are there in a particular room maybe uh, and depending on the number of people I can adjust my the AC or I can adjust my the uh, adjust the light uh, amount of light that I have also if I want to find out certain objects in my home then indoor positioning system can also actually help now even uh, apart from this there are many uh, applications that one can actually develop for example like uh, if i have an elderly people in my house then how we can actually monitor them or how they can uh, alert the appropriate person at the right point of time so i can design a um, smart bed i can design smart chair for them so that the necessary help can provide can be provided very easily and there are many many applications that can be developed to improve the life quality to improve the efficiency to help the users <coughs> another big topic is the smart city so smart city is a uh, very big problem in the sense that it encompasses lot of other stuff and which itself uh, a very big topic in itself like when I have a smart city I need to consider the transportation I need to consider the energy I need to consider the agriculture and many other things that comes into the picture and interesting thing is that when I have this smart city I, I'll be getting different kind of data from different sources so I from for my transportation I will have certain kind of data for agriculture I will have another kind of data but the interesting thing is that this data will be somewhat interlinked in the sense that if I want to optimize the whole system because if I have an agriculture uh, if I have some product from the agricultural stuff then that has to be transported to some other place so it will come into the transportation and it has to be transported in an efficient manner similarly <coughs> if I have electric vehicles so that can be used for transportation as well as I have to charge those electric vehicle in an intelligent manner so that I do not make any kind of instability in my power network so 
these two are actually related and uh, in most of the time we will find that one of the stuff is related with the other one now here i have listed few possible uh, applications in smart city like i mm, so i want to predict the crowd movement so if, if, in a in a busy uh, road or in a busy bus stand or in a rail station the people will be moving from in a particular manner because uh, during the office hours in the beginning of the office hours the flow will be in a particular direction when th in the um, when the office hours is over the flow of the crowd will be in another direction so this is a very simple thing but there can be other kind of pattern also so how we can predict the crowd movement at the different time of the day and how can i manage my transportation in the uh, city uh, in a more efficient manner then uh, we can actually have a intelligent waste management how we can uh, collect the garbage in an efficient manner and then how i can process those uh, garbage and uh, uh, process those gar garbage and take uh, uh, do the necessary stuff properly even if somebody wants to monitor the pollution in a uh, city then i one needs to put several sensors in the city framework and then from every sensor it needs to uh, access the data it has to check different condition uh, different um, chemical content in the air and based on that it has to say that how what is the level of pollution in the city or if there is a pollution going beyond a particular threshold then how it can be actually uh, controlled and what are the steps that it can actually take then the smart parking system so whenever a car enters in a big parking zone typically the user finds it very difficult to find an empty slot so how the user can be guided to the nearest empty slot so which requires some kind of image processing <coughs> maybe the indoor posi indoor positioning system because it needs to find out an empty space and then you have to guide the car to the nearest empty space uh, even mm, like in in a, in a city network let's say i have traffic signal installed in several traffic junction then how can i actually operate my traffic signal in a more meaningful manner so that the people uh, who are uh, uh, or, or the majority of the traffic if it's moving to a particular direction then those traffic should not face any kind of red light in their movement so that i'll be able to uh, satisfy most of the users then energy market is a very huge market and with the advent of smart grid which actually enables the two way communication between the users and the grid <coughs> it mm, basically generates a huge amount of data and this data can be analyzed and can be uh, used for uh, maintenance it can be used for proper planning of the um, proper planning proper execution of the system so if i and uh, typically this network this um, this energy um, system or energy network <coughs> will be equipped with a uh, smart meter which can actually provide many kind of parameters that are useful to identify different kind of patterns in the power system network for example let's look into some of the 
problems where deep learning can fit like if i want to predict the local energy consumption in a zone so if i if i aware of the past history probably i can i'll be able to predict that how much energy will be required in a given zone and if this information are available then the uh, uh, source of the power, thermal power station or any generating station can take the necessary action and produce that much amount of energy and this if i have the local energy uh, information available we can actually identify and uh, the um, energy consumption pattern among the people <coughs> and <coughs> also in in present scenario there is um, also an uh, important concept like a microgrid which is a small scale smart grid where i can have renewable energy resources and uh, as well as the storage so this renewable energy sources produces the energy and can be consumed immediately by certain electrical appliances or may be stored on the battery and may be reused at a later point of time so the thing is if i have a dynamic pricing model then when the grid price is very high i'll be reluctant to use the grid power in my system i will try to use the energy that are that are being generated um, from the renewable sources or if i can draw power from my storage unit it will be better uh, beneficial for me <coughs> so so how to decide whether i am going to take power from the grid or i'll be using the energy from the renewable sources of the storage unit that i have so this decision problem can be solved through deep learning framework even if i have to predict that how much solar energy is going to be generated in the next one hour if i have the information about the weather uh, the wind velocity wind direction and the temperature so 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 if i can predict that solar energy then probably i will be able to solve this problem also pretty well because uh, i have some idea about the future so i can take necessary action at the right point in this point of time even if we see the energy scenario if i have electric vehicles then how i can manage those vehicles so how i can charge those electric vehicles in an efficient manner without disturbing the grid by taking from by consuming a significant amount of power or if the electrical vehicle is mm, mm, uh, uh, if a electrical vehicle is, pl is planning to move from a particular position from a let's say to another position b then what would be a good route for that vehicle because it may happen that the vehicle won't be able to reach its destination from the source in a uh, without being charged intermediately so it may need to go for a charging and then it has to reach to the destination then how can i decide or what would be a good path uh, so that i can optimize the energy consumption as well as the uh, time it takes to reach the destination then there are other applications i will just um, uh, uh, tell few of those and this is again not a very exhaustive list this is just a basic overview of the different problems that can be solved using deep learning framework like if i look into the healthcare domain then uh, i can monitor what kind of diet i am taking and what is its food value even when i am taking some food then i can take an image of that food and based on that image one can actually tell that 
what is the food quality what can what the what is the quality of the food or how much calorie i'm going to intake and whether i'm taking the balanced food balanced diet or not so many queries can be answered <coughs> so so, um, so this is one aspect then another big chunk of in uh, in source of information is the medical images so typically the the big hospitals are has a huge amount of data in terms of x-ray in terms of mri in terms of mammogram and many sorts of medical test uh, they do and those data are available so if we look into only the image part then uh, uh, extracting the uh, um, relevant information from that image is a pretty challenging job for example let's say if i have been given <coughs> um, um, uh, x-ray of chest then if i need to tell about is there any issues on that uh, on the patient then how can i develop an automated framework that will tell me whether the person has some issues or not and if there are issues then what kind of issues it has <coughs> now so and many other problems there in the healthcare domain now let us look into um, very some very basic problems into the agricultural domain so if i have a large land uh, in which the crops are um, uh, <coughs> in which crops are seeded then <coughs> uh, 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 then probably I have to monitor the growth of the crops and I may need to find out if there is any kind of disease th that are uh, uh, going to happen by looking into the uh, uh, corpses <coughs> and also I may need to classify the land and the crop uh, depending on the requirement and also I need to monitor the moisture level in the soil so that I can pump water into the soil whenever it's required so that uh, there is no scenario of dryness and it will get the necessary amount of water for its growth. Education sector is also an important one and like a natural language translation is an important problem for like say if I if I'm looking for a particular video for my uh, for certain things to learn from internet then probably that uh, information may be available in English but somebody may not be so much familiar with English and may try to listen the stuff in their native language then how the uh, how uh, one language can be translated into some other language so which is a very very challenging problem again text summarization if i have a very big text can we summarize the stuff to extract out the meaningful information out of it <coughs> like uh, then then like uh, uh, nowadays the online courses are very popular and in many courses you will find that lots of people are registering and uh, lots of students are registering for the course and they are taking the course and in these courses typically the assignments will be provided and the student has to upload the solution for those assignments now it generates a huge amount of data and one can actually process the data to figure out who is a student who needs actually help so if if some if i can identify the students who needs help i can provide more uh, uh, more appropriate help to that student because if i have 30000 student register for a course then uh, giving feedback to the individual student is difficult and it may be also the scenario that not all the students requires any kind of help 
so i need to provide help only who actually requires it and there are other problems in education sector so uh, i'm just skipping the rest of the part <coughs> Another uh, big uh, sector is the industry because uh, if I can make automation in the uh, in the industry, then it's a uh, beneficial for the industry people because of many reasons. It do away with human labor, so human labor, so the human labor can be used for you know, doing some other meaningful work. And when I, if I have an automation, I I'll be running through some machine, so machine will not get any kind of fatigue, in, uh, in it won't get any kind of fatigue during its execution. So the quality of the product will remain same throughout the day. Now the biggest challenge is that how can we make it more smart, and uh, how can we introduce more automation in the industry sector <coughs> so there it uh, there have been significant progress on that part but still main thing can be achieved so when we are making the smart manufacturing unit also an important problem comes into the picture is the equipment that we are using because this manufacturing unit will be based on several other subunits and this equipments uh, can go uh, wire and tear if they are driving for a uh, long time so i need to monitor the health of those equipments and if i can predict that my equipment needs a uh, maintenance uh, in the early stage then it will be beneficial for me so i don't have to go for a shutdown for a long period because if my equipment fails and that equipment is very costly then my production will be stopped for a long time so that is also a big issue then there is a fault detection so if any kind of fault happens then how we can identify the fault and why it happened uh, where it happened is also an important problem to think over. <coughs> if you go into the sports domain, then there are many interesting problem can be taken up. Like I want to track the players behavior, how they are behaving in a field, how they are behaving in of the field during the training session and many other thing can be done even the sports arena let's say if it's a football ground or the basketball ground then how can how can i make it more intelligent like if uh, like the one of the main issue in the uh, soccer that whether the ball cross the goal line or not so if i have install if i can install camera and if i make my f mm, football a uh, smart one probably i'll be able to detect whether it can it cross the goal line or not even many other thing can be tracked like offensive play and maybe the mm, group activity how a player movements is happening that kind of pattern also be found out for uh, analyzing the uh, sports <coughs> retail is also an important domain where deep learning has made a significant progress uh, with the help of IoT as well. So let's say somebody wants to find out a particular kind of clothes. So he may have some similar photo of the clothes. Then he will upload the photo of that clothes and our job is to find out the similar kind of items. Now, when I do a search, I just take the string and I can match the string. But when I have an image and I want, I am interested to find out similar image, then it's a difficult problem. So how we can figure that thing out or how we can actually pro provide the 
important match to the uh, uh, person who is requesting for the same set of data so it's a very very challenging one and how we can provide m more help to the visually impaired person people by looking into the uh, looking into the behavior of a persons or if i have a history that what kind of items a particular person is buying then how can we actually recommend uh, the other items which may be useful for him even uh, so these are from the user side from um, management one let's say i have a very big warehouse or maybe i have a big uh, shop where many items are on display now certain items are being procured by the users and therefore the number of available items is very less then uh, it can actually alert the authority that a particular kind of items is uh, uh, is need to be uh, re uh, replenished as early as possible so it's not only the authority but it can actually noti it can also notify the supplier of that item that in this mm, shop this item is uh, being uh, you uh, bought by the users so therefore you need to provide more number of items there so these are some of the applications uh, where both deep learning and iot can come into the picture so these are the applications oriented now i will be talking about a little bit of <coughs> when i really want to l uh, run a deep learning model on the iot device now when i when i need to run a deep learning model iot device the first thing is that uh, IoT devices are resource constrained device so it will have a very very limited memory it will have a uh, very very limited computation power and typical deep learning model are very very huge so if you if you uh, uh, if you look into some of the well known uh, image network uh, image recognition network then it you will find that it has 152 number of layers in some some of the well known architecture so the most some of the most popular architecture is the vgg net rest net and the google net which has many number of layers and the once we train that model and the whole model takes uh, um, maybe around 10 to 100 mb depending on the network size so this kind of memory are not available on the iot device so it's a very very challenging problem to solve so now uh, the thing is how then this problem is solved so typically this deep learning models are first developed <coughs> and developed on the high-end server which will be uh, trained with a huge number of amount of data and once the model is developed then it will be transferred to the iot device for the actual execution so th so by doing this the advantage is that uh, even if my iot device is a resource constraint i am not going to use those device for my training purpose so that can uh, solve some of the issue the thing is if i have a network which requires say 50 mb of uh, space to store the model then it's a uh, very difficult for me to accommodate those uh, huge amount of model parameters on the iot device so what we can do we can actually compress the uh, model so how we can actually compress the model so typically if you see any neural network probably you will find that most of the time it will be a fully connected layer in many cases 
if it's not a CNN or, or, or for a simplicity let us assume that we had two layers of neural network then this uh, this every neurons will be connected to every other neuron in the next layer so if this happens then I will have a huge number of parameters to consider and those uh, storing of those parameters is a difficult problem now in many times if I have this many number of uh, if I have a huge number of parameters then we also find that many parameters will be value will be close to zero so if I have a parameter which is close to zero then probably it's uh, not contributing on the final outcome <coughs> so therefore we can actually remove those links and we can actually compress the network so for example if after I prune some of the edges maybe at that point of time I have a network something like this it may happen so just a, just a sy synthetic one and a random one now if I have this scenario then probably we can say here we have to do store nine elements and probably here we need to store only the five elements <coughs> so we can save some amount of space now the thing is now the thing is when I am developing my model probably I will start with a model something like this with all the neurons connected to every other neurons in the next layer will develop a perfect model probably and that will be developed on a high-end server including using GPU now once my model is ready I need to transfer this model on the IoT device so when I'm transferring this model on the IoT device maybe I may not need to do that uh, <coughs> great extent computation so I can actually prune some of those computation now when I'm pruning those computations then I'm introducing some kind of inaccuracy so that can uh, lead to a poor outcome of the whole stuff so what what is being done typically that once we prune some of the edges on the original network we again retrain on the compressed network and try to adjust those weight parameters again so if i if i do this then it's expected that this weight parameter will be more optimized towards for this network and can produce a reasonably accurate solution so that is the so that's why we have said that approximate approximate computing is preferred and also another important thing that when i have a, a, a very big network let's say i have 10 such layers in my <coughs> neural network then i have huge number of parameters to store and i may not be able to fit all those parameters on my iot device so what we can do we can <coughs> we can put some of the layers on the iot device and and the rest of the part we keep it on the cloud so this part will be kept on the cloud <coughs> so so some computation will be done on the iot device and then the some uh, information extracted out of that stuff will be communicated to the cloud now here is the interesting scenario that and that uh, why should i put this uh, why should i break this uh, original model now in order to optimize the stuff probably i have to see that uh, 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 
that how can i how am i using the network is uh, avail, uh, how am i using this network bandwidth here because if i put if i partition the model here then probably i may have to um, transmit a huge amount of data and then i will be using the network bandwidth but if i put it here then probably i can do a significant amount of com computation on the iot device and a minimal amount of information i will pass it to the cloud so here comes the of the trade off that if i if i if i if i uh, break this model at this place then i have to transmit a huge amount of data to the cloud but if i transmit here i have to transfer probably a small amount of data to my cloud but if i have this scenario then i should have reasonably good amount of computation power but if i partition it here then i have a very minimal computation power so we have to choose a point where uh, we have the optimal usage of the bandwidth so these are the primary problem that we need to address when we are uh, doing the deep learning on the iot devices so so in a summary of this 3 hour lecture we have seen the basic deep learning why it's actually important then we have talked about the neural network the different aspects of the neural network <coughs> the back propagation algorithm which is the core of this uh, the whole stuff we have also seen the gradient descent how we can actually identify the par uh, parameter so back propagation is an extended stuff of the gradient descent and in this lecture we have seen many applications where both iot and the deep learning can actually help and finally when we do uh, when we run the deep learning model on the iot devices we know that what are the things we need to consider so with this i will stop here thank you